Hi, I'm John from York Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Uh, just when we thought inflation was sort of uh, on the downward path in the US, we get a little bit of a shocker. CPI came in at uh, plus 0.5, which gave a reading of 6.4 year on year. Now, while that's slightly down from the 6.5, um, sort of previously, market was looking for a read of 6.2. But the super core inflation, which is really the key uh, metrics that the Fed watches, that was plus 0.2, giving a year-on-year -year reading of 4%. Now, the main contributors here for the rise was shelter costs um, and energy. So potentially, does that put 50 basis point hike back on the table from the Fed? Uh, you remember the last meeting they did 25 and was expected to do 25 at the next meeting as well. And certainly commentary coming out of the Fed, you know, has been encouraging. They, they do acknowledge that, uh, you know, inflation is it's clear, it's clearly on a downward path. Uh, but it's just going to be interesting now to see what sort of rhetoric comes out after this number. Now on the back of that yields have spiked uh, 10 years back at uh, 376 now. Now if you remember sort of uh, two to three weeks ago, that was trading way below 350. But markets after initial sort of sell-off seems to recover a little bit and the Dow's only down at just over 100 points at present. been encouraging as well is uh, Fitch has uh, upgraded uh, China's GDP for the year um, coming up to 5% now from 4.1. Now obviously that's a pretty major upgrade and really have a pretty big boost uh, to the global economy. Although as yet it's unclear really what the sort of latest spat between sort of China and the US um, regarding the sort of weather balloons and the shooting down thereof um, will have on, uh, on the, the trade. As sort of indicated, uh, oil has uh, sort of uh, pushed back a little bit and is currently trading just below 80 bucks a barrel. Now in the UK, uh, the FTSE sets a new high there, and uh, you know again encouraging news because you know certainly the UK economy really was uh, sort of predicted to go into a deep dark recession. That appears to be not the case now, and they appear to have sort of avoided a technical recession. Still got ongoing issues with sort of industrial disputes, but the economy is still growing, even though it's uh, only slightly. The same goes for the EU region as well. Uh, you know, the EU Commission has come out now and uh, sort of predicted that uh, you know they won't go into recession. I'm potentially looking at growth of uh, plus 0.8 for 2023, which is still pretty anemic, but it is a positive sign. And also as well, falling inflation over 2023 and sort of getting back to more sort of uh, manageable levels by 2024. Now, certainly that reopening of the Chinese economy has really helped the Australian economy. Um, and uh, as well, uh, you know, after a hiatus of around sort of two years, the first sort of coal ships have left Australia um, heading for China. Now, that's certainly a major boost for the Australian economy and more ships are on their way. Now here in New Zealand, as we start the earnings season, um, obviously the big news has really been uh, sort of psychoing uh, Gabriel 
and uh, you know the impact on the North Island with a national state of emergency called only for the third time for the whole of the North Island. Indeed, certain areas around the East Coast are still sort of cut off uh, without sort of power um, and uh, um, communications. So the cleanup process now begins and you know, it's certainly going to be a, a long drawn out process, it's not going to be a quick overnight fix. You know, certainly for many of the tourism businesses, uh, you know, this is the last thing you needed after a pretty tough, uh, you know, last sort of 18 months. The last thing they needed was, uh, you know, sort of uh, reduced tourist numbers coming through. But obviously we'll see a little bit of economic activity in terms of sort of rebuilding, um, you know, sort of houses, etc. Um, governments also announced uh, that they are putting up the minimum wage. Up to twenty two seventy, that's a dollar fifty increase or a seven percent increase. Now, just quite what the inflationary implications of that is, you know, it's really too early to tell uh, because, you know, certainly New Zealand's still got a massive labour shortage as well. And with the ongoing obviously clear up after the cyclone and sort of rebuilding, it's just going to be very interesting to see how that sort of takes place over the next sort of two to three months, given the labour shortages we currently have. Because certainly with the insurance payouts, you know, there will be money pumped into the economy and that will be spent. I mean, it could be interesting now for the Reserve Bank because, you know, do they look to uh, increase interest rates again, given the sort of hardship and, uh, you know, sort of struggles that uh, um, people are going through? But then obviously with the devastation of some of these sort of fruit and veg growing areas, um, it's going to put more pressure on, uh, on food prices. So it's really just going to be a very interesting uh, sort of finely balanced act that the Reserve Bank has to, uh, has to try and uh, manoeuvre. Now if you are looking for income options, uh, go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz for lots of interesting articles and we'll look forward to speaking to you soon.